Roughly 19 million people suffer from different types of phobias in the U.S. And Dr. Jen Mann is here to answer your questions about your phobias. Our first question mm -hmm. is, what's the difference between a phobia and a fear? A phobia is a fear that has become debilitating. In other words, you're afraid of dogs. Okay, you might go to the park and be like, oh, I'm nervous, I hope I don't see a dog. But if you have an actual phobia, you're just going to skip the park altogether. It alters your life in a lot of negative ways. Do you have any fears, Megan? Uh Heights, yeah, Heights. but I just so I asked you how do you how do you get a phobia? Is it genetic or is it projection from like a parent who gets it puts it onto you as a child? A lot of phobias start in childhood. Sometimes it's a traumatic experience. Sometimes it's just kind of a fear that develops. But what we do know is that there's a genetic component. That if you have one or or two parents who have phobias, you're far more likely to have a phobia. Also, women have more phobias than men. That we have about oh, wow. double the rate. Oh, well, that's that makes a lot. Sense. Okay, we have questions <laughs> from viewers. Here's the first one. I have social phobia. So much so that I barely leave my home. Will it ever eventually go away by itself, by itself or on its own? Unfortunately, these things tend to get progressively worse, not better with treatment, and especially something like agoraphobia. When you're afraid to leave the house, isolation feeds on itself. And we don't tend to get better by just sitting in our house, not doing anything. So it's really important that she get treatment. And obviously, if you're afraid to leave your house, it's hard to go to a therapist. If you're unable to do that, then you may want to start with teletherapy. There are therapists who are willing to do FaceTime sessions. There are a lot of uh, organizations oh, now that therapists them. have where you can get therapy that way. But ultimately, you want to get yourself into that therapist's office. Not to mention, besides the fact that it is a sign that you've made progress, yeah. the best therapy, in my opinion, is always done in person, face to face. Oh. All right, second question. I have a phobia of dogs. People tell me I need to get a dog to get over it. Is this true? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, like facing that, your fears. Yeah, I right. mean, that's like saying I'm a couch potato. I want to run a marathon. Like it's right. just too much too soon. What you want to do is you want to work your way up to that. And, and I talked earlier about systematic desensitization that look, this is someone who I would take a look at. OK, can you watch a cartoon of a dog? How do you feel about seeing a dog on TV? How do you feel about your friend's really tiny dog who's really sweet? Can you pet that dog? You want to work your way up that kind of yeah, extreme let's not get a exposure. Rottweiler. Uh, yeah, like wow. that does not yeah. work. That will actually probably make the fear worse, not right. better. Okay, and our last one here is I think I have claustrophobia. I have to ride an elevator daily and I get anxious each time. What are some tactics I can use to get through it? And, you know, you can't avoid some things. Exactly. And, and this sounds like someone who has a fear as opposed to a phobia because it's not debilitating. They're getting anxious in the elevator, but they're not refusing to get into an elevator or not going to work because they can't. So one of the things I recommend is, first of all, when you're in the elevator, do deep breathing. When we have a phobia or anxiety, our heart rate gets faster. It makes us sweat. It makes us get dizzy. Inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, exhale for four counts. What this does is it slows down your heart rate, which makes it less likely that you're going to have those other symptoms. The other thing I would recommend is at home, especially before you're going to get into an elevator, but even when you're not going to, start to do visualization. Imagine yourself in an elevator while doing those deep breathing exercises mm -hmm. because you want to start to have a better, calmer association between you and elevators. So I know I have arachnophobia because there's a spider picture behind you and I can't even look at Ooh. it. Jen, thank you so much. Okay.